Well, today I have a real treat that I'm making. Pretty little, wonderful looking lamb shanks. These are so good, and I just happened to find a nice, pretty small size. They weren't, I've had some that are so big, one shank would fill the whole plate, but I really like these because of their size. So, the nice thing about lamb shanks is that they take, they do take a couple hours in the oven. However, once they're done, they get better with age. In other words, they'll be better in a day or two, but they're just so easy to rewarm, it's ridiculous. Now, Here's what we're going to do to start these. We are going to salt and pepper these actually really well, a little bit more than what you think because you do have a decent sized piece of meat that is being seasoned, you know, all the way down to the bone. We're going to put a nice coat of fresh ground pepper on the lamb shanks. I have a pan warming up. What I'm going to do is brown these first in a pan, then add the other ingredients for the sauce or the braising liquid, and then they'll go to the oven covered for a couple hours. But anyway, so you can see they're nicely seasoned all the way around. Now I'm going to put a little bit of oil. This pan that I am using has nice deep sides on it and I really like that because that's going to help with the sauce plus it'll accommodate the depth of the meat or the thickness of the meat shall I say. So anyway, you want to warm your pan up nicely. Then we're going to put the lamb shanks in. This is the perfect size pan to hold this. And what I'm doing when I'm putting these in the pan is well, there's two sides to the pan, or the lamb shank, the narrow end and the thicker end. So I'm going every other direction so that they fit nicely and brown nicely in the pan. These are starting to brown up nicely. Getting a little nice brown on one side. They're almost there. Now, what I have ready to go for the sauce is some chopped carrot, celery, and onion. And what I've done, I got this ready in advance, chop it in advance so that all you have to do is dump it, brown it, whatever. I put the carrot on top because that's the first thing I want in the pan. The carrot is a little bit uh, harder than, say, onion and the celery, so I want this to go on the bottom of the pan. So I put it in the bowl last, just as a little hint when you're making your, as the French say, mise en place. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, these look good. So, yeah, they're looking quite lovely. I'm going to flip them to the other side. They're taking on a nice golden color. This is going to add a lot of depth of flavor to the sauce, for sure. You know, you need to you need to brown them first, definitely. All right, so while those are browning, I am going to slice some whole garlic cloves. Actually, I'm going to use quite a few garlic cloves. I have some decent sized ones. What have I got here? Two, four, we'll use six. That's like one and a half for each one. I've made lamb shanks before with the roasted garlic sauce. That's awesome. Instead of the tomato base that I'm doing today, you would use uh, uh, garlic cloves, and it's about eight garlic cloves to one shank. Uh, you roast them on a bed of garlic with herbs, and then when the lamb shanks are done braising for a couple hours in the oven, the garlic's nice and soft, you add a little chicken stock to it and puree it. And oh boy, isn't that good. But anyway, for today, we're going to do a tomato base. So I'm just going to slice the garlic on the thin side. You could chop it if you want, and the reason that I'm not putting it on the lamb shank itself is because I don't want the garlic to burn while I'm browning the, the lamb shank. And that is why I'm not putting the herbs on right away too. Alright, garlic's ready to go. Slice nice and thin. Now one thing you want to do with the lamb shanks, make sure you brown them 
all the way around nicely. In other words, on all, as it is, sort of four sides, including the bottom, which would actually be the fifth, um, you want to brown them both flat sides and this side as well. So now I'm going to stand them up in the pan to do that. You sort of have to stand them up and lean them against each other to do that one side. You can see how I have them standing up in the pan to brown that one side. That'll only take a minute or two. Yep, that one looks good. Now what I want to do, and that's looking exceptional, is stand them up, I'll put them, I'll lean them against the side of the pan. I'm going to stand them up so that I get this side too. As best you can, it's a little challenging to do that side, but you can sort of stand them up and lean them against each other as best you can. The most surface area you can brown, the better. The better the flavors of the sauce and the lamb shank actually in the end. Okay, so these look nice and browned on the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is pull them out of the pan and they'll just go on the side for a little bit. Now I'm to put the vegetables in, get some nice color on these and carrots in the bottom first and then the celery make a nice bed on the bottom actually you could give these carrots maybe a minute or two first on the bottom so that they soften because they are the hardest of the vegetables okay now i'll add the onion and the celery that's going in Scatter that around the top. Okay, now I'm adding the sliced garlic on top of the onion. Then I'm putting in one bay leaf. And I might as well put that in now because we want the flavor of the bay. Just one will do it. That'll be plenty. So what I want to do is soften these nicely and then once they're softened, I'll put some herbs on top, put the lamb shanks back in, put the herbs on top and then the tomatoes and then they're going to braise on top of these vegetables. Well these vegetables are looking quite lovely, smelling even better. They're taking on a slight golden color that you can see just a little bit. I left everything in the pan from the lamb, the juices and the browning oil, which I used extra virgin oil. So now I think what we're going to do is, um, this is a non-stick pan. If you were using a regular pan, either way, you might have a little bit of brown bits that get stuck to the bottom of the pan. But what I'm going to do is add some chicken stock in the bottom of the pan. Now I want to add a small can of diced tomato. The diced tomatoes are really going to be good. And we'll mix those around well. Yum, lots of garlic, tomato, carrot, celery, onion. Okay, so now this is looking quite lovely. It's come back up to a nice boil and you know, it's reducing just about where I want it. So now the lamb shanks are going to go back in. And I'm going to stagger these in the pan. And then we're going to put the juices that kind of oozed out of those lamb shanks in with them. Now I'm going to put some herbs. We want to put, I'm going to put some chopped parsley. I am going to put about a half a teaspoon of some rosemary that I'm crumbling in my hand. This is dried rosemary. If you use fresh, just mince it up real fine. But a bit of dried rosemary. 
And then, I like to put this in my hand too, just in case you miss. We're going to put some thyme, fresh or dried. And then, I also want to add some mint. Now what I did last year was, oh, just before the last frost set in, I picked all my mint and I put it in a bag so now I can use it easily. And what I'm going to do, I don't want stem, but I let it dry. Can't wait for Derby Day. That's usually the telltale sign. Mint's usually up by then. Now, what I'm doing is taking a few stems of mint out and crushing it in my hand and leaving the stems. Whoops, there's a stem. We want to get rid of that. And it's the equivalent of about three quarters of a tablespoon of dried mint. Mint and lamb really go nicely together. I didn't use it all, so it went back to the bag. All right, so now what I'm going to do, since I want this in with the sauce, I'm going to roll the lamb shanks over in the pan, and that will distribute the herbs evenly over that and get them down into the sauce. So, you can see this is looking really good. Now I'm going to take just a little bit, a few tablespoons of the sauce and put them, put them over the top of the lamb. So here we have, doesn't this look good? Lamb with all the herbs and the vegetables. Oh my God, this is gonna be so good. All right, now there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna put this in the oven, but if you keep an eye on it, you could do the stove top too. But what you wanna do is put a nice tight cover on it and then simmer it. It's, it's gonna take about two, two and a half hours. Well, I want the meat falling off the bone tender. Now, just because um, it's easy and it's a nice raising temperature, I have the oven set at 325 degrees. I don't wanna go hot and fast on these. I want a nice slow braise on them. All right, so with a nice tight cover, I'm gonna put these into my 325 degree oven, and then I'll check them in about an hour and a half to make sure, but it's probably two to two and a half hours is reality. Well, it's been about two and a half hours that the lamb shanks went into the oven, and oh my gosh, if they don't look perfect, now, how can we tell? Oh, they smell so good. Oh my goodness. Now, how I can tell that they're for sure done is you can see where the meat has pulled away from the bone. And when I push this with the knife, oh, that's beyond tender. I mean beyond tender. So these are perfectly cooked. And what I'm going to do is put them on a platter and we'll check the sauce. Now these are gonna to have to come out of here very careful, carefully because they are beyond tender. And so, out they come. God, these look so good, they smell so good. Oh my, this is gonna make some friends of mine very, very, very happy. Okay, lamb shanks. Now, let's look at the sauce, see what we got. So this did reduce quite a bit. Now I could do one of two things with this. I could puree this, but actually I like it just a little bit chunky, but it does need to be thinned. So I'm going to turn the heat on, warm this to a simmer. I'm going to put a splash of water in the bottom of the pan. We'll bring this up to a simmer, and I'm going to take the liquid, the broth, and go around the sides of the pan as if to deglaze it. But since this is a non-stick pan, there's really not a lot to deglaze, but I do want that flavor off the sides before that gets really hot. We're gonna try it. Oh my God. 
the lamb, the little bit of mint really makes a huge difference. If you can't find fresh mint, look for some dried mint and do add a little bit of dried mint. It really makes a big difference in the sauce. But now I'm going to shut it off because what I'm looking for with this sauce is something to put over rice that I think I'll serve those lamb shanks on. Maybe some rice and white beans. This will be perfect with that. And so I want it a little bit liquefied so that it also uh, gets the rice nice and juicy. But what we can do in the meantime is put a spoonful on top of the lamb shanks. Oh my god, I can't tell you how good this smells. And to that, it's going to get a little bit of chopped parsley for some fresh. So isn't that a wonderful spring dish?